statement in regards to virtual meetings. Ready? Yes. Do you want me to do it or you want to dive in? Yeah, I'll do it. Okay. 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 Yes. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> you have a good voice. In light of the 2020 COVID-19 virus and current guidance regarding physical distancing to reduce the potential for spread, meetings of the Richmond Regional Planning District Commission have transitioned to a virtual format. Regional public bodies were granted authority to conduct meetings electronically pursuant to the provisions of the Virginia Code 2.23708.2 and related to legislation approved by the General Assembly of the Virginia during the period of the Governor's State of Emergency Declaration for COVID-19. While we do not know the exact duration of the current practice of electric meeting, electronic meetings, we will continue to function in this manner until such time as it is deemed appropriate to return to in-person meetings. Staff provided notice of this meeting and the means by which we are virtually gathered to members of the public on Monday, August 17th, 2020, through electronic posting on the Plan RBA website and email distribution of notice to members, alternates, and unknown interested parties, including the media. This meeting will be recorded. Audio and visual recordings of the meeting and materials will be posted on the Plan RBA website within 48 hours of this meeting. Any member of the public participating as an observer during the meeting today may submit comments or questions at any time during the meeting via email at info at planrba.org or by using the online chat functions of the meeting platform. Those individuals who are observing by phone may be called upon to share questions or comments. This meeting agenda includes two opportunities for members of the public to address this body. All comments and questions submitted during the meeting will be reviewed following the meeting and to the extent practical responses will be provided or posted on the Plan RBA website. We ask that everyone identify themselves first when speaking so that we can more accurately record the activities of the meeting. All lines have been muted by the meeting administrator to minimize additional noise and feedback. We may unmute your line at any time to request acknowledgement from the chair. Staff will also be monitoring chat functions throughout the meeting to assure we do not overlook anyone wishing to participate as appropriate in the discussion. Does anyone have any questions regarding the process for assuring effective facilitation of this meeting or how members of the public can participate? No. Mm -hmm. I'll now ask our clerk to certify that we have followed the approved procedures for appropriate notice of this meeting and the means by which we are convening. Yes, we did. Thank you. Now, um, we're going to do the roll call, so please indicate by saying here when your name is called by during the roll call. Staff members will also be asked to identify themselves. Ms. Fusco. Mr. Blackwood. Ms. Gray. Mr. Holland. Uh. Ms. O'Bannon. Ms. Page? Aye. Mr. Peterson? Here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Roll call attendance. Okay. Item C, uh, May and July minutes, big minutes. Are there any corrections, deletions, or updates to the minutes that you would like to I didn't see any I mentioned? Yeah, I did look fine to me as well. Mr. Therefore, Chairman, I'm going to go through the minutes. Um, all the, um, May 29th of July the 7th is, um, is presented. Thank you. It's, it's been moved in. It's been second. Properly second. All those in favor of sign of five. Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. We, we can hear so we don't need to roll call in that regard. Now, item two, July 20th, year to date financial statements, pages 8 through 14. Terry, mm -hmm. Terry, would you like to? lead us through that, if you would, please. This is our first month of yes. the brand new fiscal year. Correct. Thank you for saying that. Um, on the balance sheet, do you want to scroll to the balance sheet? Balance sheet? Okay. Balance sheet. Okay. I have it from, thank you. The balance sheet. Um, as we go through the balance sheet, um, we know that on page two of the statement of the opposition balance sheet, we look at the summary of the transactions and the fund balance. Mm -hmm. um, we did have a, a slight loss for the month of July for a loss of $9,631. And we have um, billed year two of the special assessments in the amount of 30122 which brings our unrestricted reserve balance at July 31st to Million one thirty one two eighty. Okay. Are there any questions on the balance sheet? Uh, just ones of not being an account. I'm just looking for long term liabilities. I'm still trying, still trying to understand. Uh, so, the still, um, please keep in mind that we're still in the fiscal year 20 audit, and our audit firm is scheduled to come on site 
on September 9th that we are in, in the, pretty much in the middle of the process right now. Well, I'm, st I'm just still looking at these, and we get we're zero in one column. We're okay. We got numbers in the other column. I'm still trying so to comprehend what the me, difference is. Let me test my layperson okay. understanding and see if the experts in the room okay. can okay. validate that. If you look at the first row, for example, the deferred rent liability, the mm -hmm. twenty-two thousand nine five nine, those are liabilities that do exist but are not due during the report period. So they're out in the future beyond and so that's why you see them on the left hand column in the statement of that position because they exist but they're not due which is why they don't show on the right hand column so the right hand column is the statement is the is the summary that is what is real and present in front of us and the left hand column is what's farther out into the future usually beyond one year on average beyond a year Okay, well, so everything on the left hand column is due next year. So, yeah, or so. The year after. So, or yeah, like so if you remember, like, this is the way I think about it again, so I'm testing mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. But we set the $1 million fund balance because we know we have these out, lo outlying longer term obligations. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we have the dollars to cover that. You know, the lease is, a, I think, always a really helpful example because it's concrete. Um, we want to make sure that we have that, you know, that we that we can cover. But as far as what's present and due, that's the right hand column. Yeah. Because we've paid our, our we've paid our our um, rent for July. But our real position is the left hand column. From, 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 from an accounting from perspective. From an accounting from a right. perspective, yes. Yeah, okay. So statement of net position yeah. is the budget. And the balance sheet is the expenses or the balance of the budget after expenses have been paid. After and present ex current good. expenses, the <laughs> left is, is the, and, and again, so rent is a very concrete, but the pension liability is real insofar it's what's been calculated and reported, but it's not due. And there's not even a due date. No, because but we're, ob but we're obligated to pay these funds at some point. Yes, right. and that number, though, is variable <laughs> depending on the actuarial calculation so, yes. yeah. so that number doesn't and it, same with same with the deferred inflows those are calculated figures based on a certain set of conditions and they change each year uh -huh. out of our control so that's why they're 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 real in that they exist but those numbers are not necessarily if we had to stroke the check today that may or may not be the actual number we would have to pay. It'll be there out years. Okay. And that obligation is low enough to where we're not required to send the trust any kind. And I think that what you're asking is is the more recent GASB um, or GAP, whichever, GASB rules that said you have to start re reporting this because people in your positions need to know that these figures exist. Exactly. Because it used to be that they not have to be on the financials, so the right column was all you would see. But there is this kind of outstanding long-term due liability due at some point, sometime in the future, that it's important for you all well, to I know. Well, I appreciate that, because, I mean, that is important. I'm told that we know <laughs> yeah. that we've got the right truth. We know the play it right. And I think, you know, you guys have read about organizations across the country that ran into problems with their pension funds. I mean... This is in part, if I'm not mistaken, the GASB, you know, required that you start reporting this in part because of that. Yeah. Absolutely. So. Absolutely right. So, yeah. okay, so that's that was a good test on my part, right? You passed. Right. Oh, very, very good. Very good. Good to All right. All right, Terry. Move on, So, please. on the next page, <laughs> okay. we have, we're presenting only the month of July. That's right, on 30 days, 31 days. So, this is... The month of July compared to the annual budget. Mm -hmm. Okay. There is a year-to-date percentage of total budget column, mm -hmm. which is the percentage spent. Mm -hmm. So one month would be the target. That target rate would be eight point three three percent. As Martha and I were reviewing these financial statements, we we just kind of threw uh, the number of 25% uh, variants out there okay. and thought, you know, 25%, explain. we should explain those. Yeah, I agree. That's a good point. Good. 
deduction. So for the first quarter, it would be 25%. Mm -hmm. For the second quarter, it would be 50%. Okay. 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 So as we go through the income, we can see mm -hmm. that under the Chesapeake Bay um, program, there is a 39.26% year-to-date percentage budget, which is basically an outlier. Um, this project is actually coming to an end. It's not going through the entire fiscal year. Therefore, it has a high variance at this time. The project is actually going to end December. So as we move to the What Pat can I hear? What's the account number for this item? You might want this to reiterate. Is account number four one one five. Four one one five. Federal funding section. So are you gonna have to speak up more? Okay. I'll move this to you. Thank you. Actually, the other okay. sound that we're getting that green yeah. bar going across. So okay. we're being too quiet, I guess. Okay. But this is a very can't hear us. Where is was she? Here, over here, or over there. whatever you want to do. It's fine with me as long as we achieve to go of communicate. Um, She's still logged on. Pat, can you hear me? This is Jim. She's muted. Okay. Mrs. Abana, you're muted. Can you hear us? Hello, can you hear us? She can use. If she can't use that, use the call number, Pat. If that's okay, Martha, you help. Me. I just I can't tell if she can.
person is good. Absolutely. Oh, same person is good. Virtual lights are very good if you're doing rubber stamp type work, you know, where it's just, okay, we just need to get everybody yeah. in and approve this, approve that. But if you got something you really need to understand, it works. I got CPO needs. I need to synthesize somebody. Oh, my God. Yeah. 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 Sorry, everyone. That's your fault. Be a master after this. <laughs> Hello? Mrs. O'Bannon? Yes. Hi. I just called you. You called me and I was down here. Oh, okay. 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 I don't know. We're going to have our ID. Thank you for your patience. Appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. All right. Wonderful. I'm sorry. It could be on our end, too. Um, so I, I'll bring you up to speed. Mr. Holland, Mr. Peterson, and Mrs. Page are here um, sitting around the table, as you probably can see on the video. And Terry is just starting to go through the uh, July financial statements, and we are on the... Um, we're on the, the profit and loss statement. Yeah. Okay. And that's done. I apologize for being late, but technical difficulties. Okay. No, no. Okay. All right. All right, All right, Terry. All right, All right Terry. Okay. Thank okay. you. Terry okay. was saying about four one one five. On um, the first page of the profit and loss statement. Page ten. Page ten. <laughs> Under account number four one one five, the CVRAP WIP three federal share. Income line. Mm -hmm. We have a year to date percentage of budget of 39.26%, and that is because the project is complete in December, the end of December. That's why it, it's resulting in such a high number. Um, next, we move to account line. 7720, which is legal fees other. Yes. And this has a target variance of 40%. And that's this is the new legal fee for Central Virginia Transportation Authority. Okay. And we'll be coming forward in the fall with budget amendment for that. Okay, great. Okay. It's a reimbursement. Right. Right. Well, it's going to have to 7720. It's on page 11 at the bottom. And next month, I'll make sure I put a line number next to it so that oh, I can okay. reference it and it can be found easier. And then finally, on the third page, well, I'm sorry, there's a total of four pages to the financial statements. Mm -hmm. On the third page, we have lines 
7223 for the broadband network telephone. And the year to date total budget is 33.79. And this is due to a setup of a new system. It's a voice over IP system that was implemented during COVID. And there was a, an actual billing error by the vendor. They uh, overbilled us. Okay. Uh, and we're, you know, to have that bill adjusted in the month of August. So we'll be back in line. Right. Percentage we'll wise. Line. Good. That's the key. Good. And on the fourth page of the profit and loss statement, we, sh we show a net income. Well, it's actually a net loss. Page 13. Of uh, $9,631. Okay. Yes. Uh, Martha and I had discussed this, and we believe that it's, it's attributed to 28% um, of our time charged for the month of July for staff was for leave. So, so we're personally, no one took leave from March to June. Right. But, uh, several, like, <clears throat> Seven of our staff members took vacation in July. Right. So, so we had the, now the billable hours. Still yeah, to correct. Sense. So we're not, I wouldn't say we're, we're alarmed by no, the monthly we're not. net loss. We're glad you take off. Yeah, I mean, it's, I think Mrs. Page brought this up a couple months ago. You know, it, it had to catch up with us at some point. Yeah. Right? So. All right, very good. The next page shows the fund balance projection. And basically, we've inserted a line into this graph okay. at the million dollar target mark. Of I see. Time. Very good. Thank you. I like that. Um, so, essentially, again, we are in the middle of the audit. Okay. The unrestricted reserve balance is subject to change. Mm -hmm. um, probably it won't be much because we've already reported our year end audit adjustments. Mm -hmm. Again, we had a net loss of 9631 for July. Correct. We rebuild for year two of the special assessments not collected. Okay. Two. Resulting in a unreserved balance of a million one thirty one two eight. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay. The next graph below depicts what our actual salaries are compared to monthly budget for salaries. Mm -hmm. That mon monthly budget was calculated taking the annual salary mm -hmm. and dividing it by 12. That's why it's flat. Okay. Somebody's got a call. Okay. Probably I got you. you. Probably you <laughs> okay. Good. So we were over. Um, okay. Hello. Hello. Okay, so we were over in salaries. And reason, primarily. Um, we did have um, summer interns. Summer interns. Okay. So, how many summer interns did they have? Five. All paid interns. Well, seven if you have a group. Well, here is that you look at the staff composition and allocation mm -hmm. of time. That's where we will probably see it located, right? Terry, on page 20, look on page 20, uh, we have allocation of staff time by program area. And this is the head count. Is this the head count sheet that we worked on? Mm -hmm. Look at that. It will show up there. If we have interns, some of it will show like part-time or interns, right? Right, the part-time temporary. Temporary. So the intern will be included in there too. Right. So you have six total, right? So five interns. Yeah. So, okay. so we had one intern this summer that just mm -hmm. transferred back. She's still with us, but she moved from her paid internship over the summer to an unpaid internship during the school year. Mm -hmm. One that was unpaid and went to pay, or sorry, vice versa. Was the other. Then we have two that were. Um, that are graduate students. One was at 20 hours and stays at 20 hours. One was at 40 and goes to 20. 
and one that was at 40 that has moved on. So because of those, you know, increased number of hours for interns over the summer, it's higher, and then in August we'll see those hours come down. And they have no benefits. Right, right. Pat, do you have a comment? Here. We hear you. We're talking about interns. We're talking about interns, and it, it, it might be helpful uh, if we know, denote somewhere like interns. Whether it was paid, you know, it's good to know. If it's not paid, then I guess it's good to know, but you could know unpaid. But that would be good to know. That way we would uh, know that, if you would, Terry. Does that make, make sense? Mm -hmm. Interns. That way, Miss. Patricia would know, hey, that's my five, my six. There you go. Thank you. All right. And we're just going over interns and, and head count issues regarding salaries. Pat, you hear me? Yes, I can. Wonderful. So glad you could join us. Glad to have you. Glad, glad you got great people over there at Hamrock Cup. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, Terry, okay. but you go ahead, please. <laughs> so that, that's all I have on the financials. On the financials for now, because it is just a first month of the year. Good. Now, on your special assessments, one question: mm -hmm. Fiscal Year 21. Uh, how we we are tracking in terms of who pays and who's owes, and because you know, some of the colleges may forget um, about us if we don't let them know. Our has paid. They were Last paid year, full. They would not pay at all. They would, okay. So we moved to the new city, the new county administrator. Thank you. And then Hanover, okay. they have paid year two, which they have committed to. Okay. And then City of Richmond, I spoke with them yesterday. Wonderful. And they've committed to pay. I just need for them to cut the check. Thank you. Yeah, people are a little tickled by how they're for you. Everyone else paid last year. Right. Both years. So we're, Except them. Okay. Yeah. So that's good. You're tracking it. Wonderful. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right, great. Any other comments or questions on the financials? Um, and thank you. And um, one million. We're, when we record time, our employees, our employees are getting paid bi weekly? Bi monthly? We or twice a month, bi monthly. Yeah. So, how do we track that time? We use an access database. And um, they go in and time card and they mark off which project code they used. They also in this time card they mark their time off like sick, vacation, holidays. Um, if they're flexing then they might have some hours under, a little under and they'll make it up the next pay card. So, so how? And then we take that information, Diane and I take that information, and we record that into the ADP system mm -hmm. and generate the payroll. So they never go over their project allotted amount or under their project allotted amount through the system? If, wow. as far as the transportation project, if they need to, you know, if something, of course, something could change in the project, which is natural, then we would go. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. And great news uh, is team that we're still over that one million one thirty one. We're not about to rebate it I, anyway. To, we're not about to rebate. So. Thank you. All right. Any other questions on the financials page eight through fourteen? Here at nine. Um, uh, item three. Policies and procedures updates. Okay. Terry. Um, what you'll see on this screen up here mm -hmm. is a column concerning yes. um, Thank you. the accounting area or the accounting module Wonderful. In, in the first column. And then next you'll see how we handled pre-COVID the internal controls. The next column is the change that we have made we are working remotely. Yes. And then there are some workflow notes in the next column. So, for instance, the entry to the building, which is the first highlighted cell, 
before we could just come and go pre-COVID, no worries. Now um, the executive director has set up an in and out calendar room and we must reserve time to come to the building. We can't just come and go. We need to sign that sheet as you were presented today and that basically, you know, if, if any of us were to come up with symptoms, then we would know who may possibly need to be contacted. Wonderful. Okay. Contact trace, um, trace. So, in terms of the deliveries that we've had from the various vendors, the deliveries are left at the door. Okay. And um, in the beginning, we had some items returned as we were figuring this out. Um, but if, if we've got particular deliveries coming, we'll notify uh, homeowner or subtenant to assist us with making sure the delivery stays when they come. How Diane we, will come in the next couple of days for some deliveries. How, how are we, then, we, we control your staff coming and going, but with a subtenant, how is, is there control there as well? They have. It, so, Mrs. O'Bannon, Mr. Peterson asked, how do we control in and out access with our subtenant? Homeward's team is working virtually all remote. Um, their finance director is here five days, four and a half days out of the week. So she and I communicate once a week about what their in and out is going to look like. They have a similar sign-in sheet. We've separated. They only enter and exit the door down here at their entrance. We only enter and exit through our front door. And um, if they need to use space like this, they reserve it through me. Okay, so there's no interaction that is not recorded. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, I will say just again to commend our staff and theirs, we are very fortunate that we have not had to impose these rules. It has been, I think, everybody wants to be a part of. The safety efforts so i think it's working well because everybody wants it to so sorry That's it. the the next line is the accounting system pre-covid we were just using a quickbooks desktop version um, diane and i would basically have a lot of issues working in the system at the same time um, Post-COVID, we actually did a conversion to QuickBooks Online, so it's in the cloud, and now we can both work in the system simultaneously and attach documents. Our um, accounting firm is actually in there right now, so I don't have to provide any reports. Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, so they can go in there and look and see everything that I have messed up or corrected. Oh, no, I'm sure you did <laughs> <laughs> I think that it's it's easier for the accounting firm um, to wrap up the audit. It is. Um, and then we don't have to provide as many items because we have a lot of the attachments in there. How are they contacting you regarding email. issues and questions? Email. email. Okay, good. I also so I have a Dropbox. Good. Okay. So I'm in various schedules in the Dropbox. Okay. And Martha has access to the Dropbox. Mm -hmm. And two of the accounting associates <coughs> from him as well. Okay, good. Um, so that's not going to go away when, I'm not going to say when, but say when the elections are over, this is all about the memory. Um, this will be a permanent thing. Good control. And I think that you just brought up a really great subject, and that is why did we put this list together? And it was to basically to present to our audit firm and management that we had to take a look at our internal controls and document what has changed and we're going to have to, you know, need to kind of determine what is it going to look like when we all come back to work. Because we have had a challenge, a challenging time, but we also have opportunities yeah. to think differently and work smarter. Absolutely. So in terms of the bank reconciliation, Pre-COVID, I would prepare the bank reconciliation, and Martha would review it and approve it, um, and I would do the interim reviews 
during the month. Now, during COVID, Diane prepares them. Mm -hmm. And um, I review them, Martha approves them, and then I do the interim reviews still. Um, and then I save the file for next year's audit. Okay. And you do, and you have a notation that any in journal interests that need to be recorded from the bank reconciliation. Yes. Sometimes there are journal interests that you have to enter. We have actually we have accruals. That okay. We have to enter. Oh, the accruals for sure. And we we and accrue um, corrections errors by the bank. But when our auditor comes, I'm going to ask him if I can just record like invoices each month. Mm -hmm. On your balance sheet, you'll see a miscellaneous rent receivable line. It's rather large, and then on the fourth month, you know, in April it'll go down really low because I sent out a large invoice. You will see that the AR go up. But I will talk to our audit firm about just simply invoicing as opposed to rules because it really lights up. Yeah, it does. I don't really want to use a drill. Right. Right. Okay. So we have the office manager preparing. A bank reconciliation? Yes. This is a separation of duties. And I actually prepare the cash projection and send that out for approval to Martha and the treasurer for review. And, you know, it, it is a separation of duties. That's critical. Now, uh, so there's, she has access to the bank rent itself because you do the electronic bank rent versus what for the one to come through. Right. Mail. Okay. So you can reconcile quickly. And because we, well, primarily ACH and credit card, it's we have no that. float. No float. Right? So every day good, it's reconciled. Good. Okay. Good. That's even better. Yeah. Okay. Good. So um, Martha and I, as you'll see on our, our uh, other discussions, we don't really want more than fifty thousand dollars sitting in the bank in our um, operating account mm -hmm. because we have government account mm -hmm. which requires Truist mm -hmm. to hold a dollar fifty for every dollar mm -hmm. that we have in there. So we generally try to you know transfer money to a local government investment investment fund. Yeah, even that's only paying a quarter of one percent. But it's better than zero. But it's better than getting bank charged. Yeah, exactly. having the money resolved in the bank and mm -hmm. our operating account. So if there are any more questions so, so about So different banks, than the ones I have in charge me if there's not enough money. They're going up, you know. They're going up, you know. They're going to get all this, don't worry. Not our friends. Okay. Now, for the payroll, for the pre-COVID, we actually put a control sheet together to make sure that it ties to the database and the record keeping system. You know, we make sure that anybody who's filled out a time card actually comes across on AP to be paid. If I can interrupt you. Sure. Terry sits in on, um, I mean, she's a member of the Virginia Government, Government Finance, Finance Officers, Officers Association. Association. Yeah. <laughs> and in this time of the pandemic, they've been having regular conference calls statewide. And that, coupled with a variety of other things, I think have really positioned us well to. Um, consider our vulnerabilities for fraud and, you know, really think because, you know, one of the things with everybody communicating virtually now is how do you know mm -hmm. that it's Terry, you know, so we've, we've set these things up, I think, in part to be able to navigate the system, but then, as she was saying, on the other side of it, it really is going to make sure in the long term we're not vulnerable to the bad things that can happen. So I just want to commend Terry and Diane for the work that they've done because they've kind of gone through every single procedure that we have and said, is it enough or is it not? And mm -hmm. have made these changes. And like she said, we have to make sure that when the auditors come and they test for this, that what we say we do matches with what and we do. we have do. to have it documented. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, Absolutely. in the midst of all this, they've, they've really, I think, done a great job. One of 
putting things on paper and documenting, but then too evaluating to make sure that it's it's sufficient given you know the current conditions, but also the going best practices. So, okay. um, it's been an intense couple months, but it's been really, I think, really good for the agency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good. And that's why you want to be very cautious with emails you receive. Yes. Watch the the, the, the um, IP address. Yeah. Watch that very carefully. And we're doing things like Double what it has to do with um, transfer of money, like Terry was mentioning between the opera. Terry and I, she'll, we'll do an email. I sign off of it, and then we do a phone verification by voice, too. So we're adding two steps, because it used to be that we would be face-to-face -face down the hallway and talking about these things. Yeah, and make sure you confirm confirming the transfer that's received and documented timely. Okay. Good. There's been a lot of talk, I think, in Terry's VGFOA group and in our insurance, mm -hmm. um, the Versa, about the vulnerabilities that can exist during this um, remote work situation. Okay. There's lots of positives of it, but there's also, yeah. you know, new challenges. Okay. Right. Okay, good. And the bad actors can find those out. Yeah, sure can. Really? Yeah, I mean, as an example, it's been just this week, I think mm. five different staff members got an email from somebody impersonating Martha Heater. Mm. The email address wasn't my email address, but See. it said Martha Heater, and it was like, hey, can you do me a favor? That's all it said. Mm. And right. Something like that. I don't remember. They won't engage you. Know. you. So, so five different staff members got different messages like that this yeah. week from somebody they thought was me. Right. So that's why we're trying to do these extra, getting the third person involved and doing the extra. Communicate, communicate, because that happened to me too. I got received an email because they're just trying to gain entry. Yeah. Once you respond, then they think they got you. So that's a good point. I'm glad you documented this. This is great because we need it documented. Okay. I'm, with the, I'm trying. I'm not waiting too long. Yeah, I've got time right. of the essence. Yeah, this is just more for your. Yeah, we just want to review this. We're going to go through each item unless y'all have a question well, on one particular. I will say. What would um, you like to cover? On the last highlighted item. Yes. For the invoicing, yeah. um, COVID required our rangers to allow us to email our reports into them. We were never mm -hmm. permitted to do that before. Okay. It was all snail mail. Okay. So that was one good outcome for yeah. us. Mm -hmm. You got our money faster. Mm -hmm. And on the last line, mm -hmm. it concerns new miners. Okay. Where um, pre COVID, you know, Diane, our office manager, would receive the paperwork from Martha, but now we have that same process, but we're on a virtual staff meeting as well, and we get introduced to a new buyer. Good. So we don't have um, any ghost employees. We okay. actually get to meet them. Very good. I actually sit in, with the exception of today, because I have this meeting, I sit in the weekly transportation event. And I can look and see that all of our employees are well. I mean, I can count and see mm -hmm. that, you know, the majority of the mm -hmm. employees are mm -hmm. working. Mm -hmm. They're reporting out on projects. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you're doing virtual meetings, though, you're requiring all employees to have camera and audio video on that. Is that correct? That's correct. So it's not like we are in our other big meetings where you've got the little mm -hmm. square right. with somebody's initial and trying to figure out who it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, the next couple documents are things that we put together. The, this sheet that Terry just went over, this is for your information. You don't need to act on yeah. it. It's just the administrative things right. that you're putting in place. Pages 16 and 17, I think our intention would be for you guys to review these and it's at a future meeting, ideally, approve them as mm -hmm. You know, committee level policies. Okay. Um, depending on your comfort, they could happen today or or at another meeting. Um, but we really felt like it was important to have again written down and you all involved as board members on our investment policy. As Terry mentioned, the best practice around that is to try to keep that minimum balance in the operating account, but put as much money as possible in the LGIP. 
That's Good. where we're getting a little bit more return. It's small, Good. But, Good. and it's protected, and you know, and we minimize the fees at Truist or right. any banking institution that we would have. Right, right. That's really what that investment policy is about. Mm -hmm. The now, internal. Oh, sorry. I, I would just like to add that this is actually Central Virginia Waste Management Government's policy. Okay. They were gracious enough to lend it to me. Okay. And I just made a couple of revisions to fit our agency, but I did keep one section. In particular, under the ethics and conflicts of interest section, where no employee or commissioner or alternate shall own stock Good. or have any financial interest in any company awarded to be contracts Good. by the commission except in publicly traded mutual funds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any such conflict should be disclosed immediately. Okay. Each employee. <clears throat> shall subordinate their personal investment transactions to those of the commission, particularly regarding time of purchases and sales. Okay. Now what does that last one mean? Well, basically, we want employees to come forward in particular about when you have information about a certain event that was going to happen when agency was going to you went out and you purchased an investment and had inside information. Oh, right. We do have some notes in the, on, in the column on the side where we really do want to go back mm -hmm. and discuss this with Eric Gregory, the agency lawyer. Okay. Because we're, we're trying to determine if this needs to be written in our personnel. We know yeah. that it should be in this document. Yeah, I see your point. Now, one thing we may want to do that we do not probably do is require annual certifications by commission members, especially those in financial positions. This committee. Yeah, we rely on your filings with your respective jurisdictions. Oh, you just okay. Yeah, do that. so we, I mean, we don't okay. collect that from we, anybody now. Organizations are required to, yeah. to file yeah, conflicts. It's certified. We yeah, lost, we, rely on we lost people. several members a few years ago when that became, That's right. who were citizen members who said, hey, I I'm, okay. I'm volunteering, but I'm not going yeah, to vote to everything. Right, so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. So this would be back before you, I think, would be our goal, because we'd like the committee yeah. to approve What would you policy. like us to do with it? I mean, we can do it the next meeting. We next week? I mean, oh. yeah, yeah, that gives us a chance to review it. I would look at it. One thing I'm going to say is, I, uh, like I said, once you explained it, I understood what we you know, basically right. it was mm -hmm. insider Good. information. Using, uh, I'm not sure this is clear the way so it's written. Make it and, uh, okay. We may need to bring it down to lay terms a little bit better, not just right. for everybody to understand here, but also even the staff to understand. Yeah, it. maybe subordinate. You mean probably look at notes. Probably saying subordinate. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. I just I mean it's jargony. Yeah, I hear you. I, 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 I see. I don't want to try and re rephrase it because I'm not capable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, understandable. Understandable. <laughs> understandable. Understandable. Got it. So yep. the next one on 19 right. is just yes. for your information. Um, Mrs. Page may be able to attest to this. It's it's a little bit of I think um, a blur when you become the treasurer <laughs> of what you're supposed to do, and then um, with COVID, okay. there's this whole slew of emails now that come to you, and it's like, what am I looking at? Why? And she's done a great job of asking us questions. So questions that you've asked us when you've had to review, we've tried to think through how we can improve that process. Okay. And so this is the document that Terry put together that. I'm sorry it didn't benefit you, but going forward with other treasurers, you know, we can try to make it a little bit more like this is what you have to do when you're the treasurer. So okay. just, just for your information, it's on page 19. Right, right. Yeah, page 19. Yeah, page 19. Right here. Right here, sir. Oh, got one. Good. It's called oh, treasure Okay, I listed 18. Sorry, yeah. Right. Right. So just for your information, just to know, right. again, it's just along the same lines. Thank so you. Kind of Page this is 20 great. is the chart that you all had asked for. Um, yeah, thank you. And this just gives a summary of the staff makeup over the last couple of years. So you can see how we're doing in total staff persons staff and training. how that relates to full-time equivalents. Yeah. Because as you can see, we have leveraged part-time people mm -hmm. um, you know, up and down over the course of, I see. of the years. I see. 12 to 6, 50% yeah. drop. So, yep. and if there's more information, I think we showed a, a much more detailed document to Mr. Holland. So, I mean, we could mine for more information if you want it, but we thought we'd start with something simple and you yeah. can grow from there. Yeah, I would just note the interns, as we pointed out earlier, so we have that delineated. 
Okay, and particularly the treasures too. One thing you might want to do is uh, in Chesterfield, you, about 10 years ago I started the treasures for the Chesterfield County. They didn't have any one thing. And so it's online. Put the Chesterfield treasure and, and treasure report. They provide it monthly. Now look at the cash, where all the cash is, where it's invested, the earning percentages, they denote that, what's being earned, how much has been earned, and it's been a phenomenal report. So it's a trust would you, treasure. Would you like that monthly report? Well, I don't know. It's up to the body, what the body because wants. But I think it's good to have, uh, I, think I, it's good to, I think it's good for people to see cash. People mm -hmm. always want to be on, on top of cash. I Such can, a more quick, quick, quick asset. I can change the um, investor policy yeah, do that, and that way you have a monthly overview of the treasures, balances, and invested, what earnings are. Look at our treasures report. It's a great guy. Uh, you know, there's some things I want to improve in because it passed so long that they don't change, but I think you got to adjust to it. But that's a great one to look at. If you want a copy of it, just go online. You can find it. Okay? Treasure. And you feel free to talk to our treasure to uh, Tara. She's new this year, but she's working on that report. So that's going to be a great something to look. Just be aware of. Okay. Wonderful. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about. Oh, yes, I'm oh, sorry. Please. Excuse me. I want to talk about sadness. So mm -hmm. we have 23 people. We're doing a 19. Are we hiring anybody else? It's a great question. Um, we'd like to hire three new people this fiscal year. We know that the budget, you know, when we adopted the budget, we made that commitment that we wouldn't move forward with the, the three positions until we came back through the finance committee to the full board. But yeah, I mean, we definitely have more work than we have people to get it done, especially with this new opportunity with the transportation authority. It's more for our people. So we, we, yeah, and I think we're at the point now where we've reached that, um, you know, you guys spent a lot of time with us over the last year and a half trying to figure out what the right sizing of the organization is. I think we've gotten ourselves operationally at the right place, and now we need to be able to um, fill those positions to be able to, one, generate the revenue. Because the more time we're spending in, in grant-funded projects, the more revenue we can bring in. But two, we have a lot of work to do, and not enough people to get it done. So mm -hmm. the positions that I'd like to, to move forward with would be one position that we're conceptualizing right now as a part time, up to 32, uh, 29 to 32 hours a week. Mm -hmm. That would be a clerk position. Um, it would be at a, um, a manager level that would be able to help support the commission board, the RRTPO, and the CBTA, and really help. You know, Mr. Peters and Mrs. Page are good examples. You guys serve on all three of those bodies, mm -hmm. and right now we do things very differently because it's mm -hmm. different people staffing them. That's one of the big questions I'm going to have. Uh, Thursday too is uh, where where does the TPO start and the CBTA stop? Stop because there's yeah. a lot of that's a good mm -hmm. of like stuff that's uh, yeah. So we'd like to be able to build up our staff capacity possibly. to be able to keep those to keep candidly to keep the synergy there because there's a lot of opportunity to be efficient, but to make sure that everything stays sort of um, separated as well. Yeah, so that's the first position. So you want to hire this as a manager position? It would be like a clerk level FOIA, um, yeah, part time from an hours perspective, and they would be uh, responsible for the record keeping for the three bodies. Um, they would be responsible for responding to FOIA inquiries. We, we honestly think that that's going to increase with the new uh, authority. CBTA would be a problem. So and this is a little bit more than just a clerk. Yeah. It would be akin to what you guys see in your local governments with, with those roles. I mean, somebody who's really the customer service focus for the board members, you know, really being that um, person to interact with you guys and make sure you have the information and resources that you need. Um, the second position is a, a um, leadership level position around data, re data research and analysis. We've heard time and time again that, um, you know, one of the best opportunities for the commission is to continue in that data space. And so having somebody that can really focus on that, um, it's a capacity need that our staff members have identified through a number of leadership conversations, and it's also a growth opportunity from our strategic planning process. So, you know, somebody with maybe like an econ economics background mm -hmm. that can really look at data forecasting and projections and things like that and really kind of dig into data and metrics, performance measures, those kinds of things. And then the third position would be around public engagement and community involvement. Again, another area that we've identified in our strategic planning framework, we need to do a much better job of getting 
members of the public involved in any work that we do. Um, it's a requirement for all of our federally funded programs. It's become something that we've heard time and time again from the board as being a priority. And also, obviously, with the last several months, we've, we've recognized that we need to be doing more to engage in the community, however that looks going <laughs> like forward. So those would be the three positions we're eyeing for this fiscal year that we have like. a priority on those three positions is to, if you, if you only got two, what, which two would it be? Or, or. My personal opinion, without the leadership team weighing in, would be the, the clerk position and the public engagement communications position. So do we have, and I, um, as staff, do we have a list of how many people work in each department? Sure, yeah. Okay. yeah. Just um, eyeballing it of the 19 that you see that are full-time. So I was going to say 10, but it could be 11 are in transportation. 10 full-time are in transportation. One of the part-times are in transportation. And then um, we have one full-time in the environmental program, one part-time. One full-time in emergency management. And the rest are um, us, the three of us. And Sid, who you might have known before, or the four of us are administration. And Your administration. The last, okay. the last person is um, regional planning, GIS, that kind of thing. And then others in the transportation bucket. Oh, okay. So. Okay. <laughs> but I, I'll give you a chart that shows up so you don't have to remember it. Thank you. Yeah, that's good. That's okay. helpful. Great question. So we would like to come before, I, I wanted to get guidance from the committee if you want to see that formal cost proposal to this committee before it goes through to the executive committee or what? Yeah. Carter, proposal, what will be, proposal will be acceptable, right? Everybody agree? Yeah, I think we ought to see it first. Yeah, we ought to see it first before uh, the committee. Particularly right now with the CBTA not having gotten off the ground. Yet. Yeah. And yeah. So yeah. that's got to be done. And first. that's got to be decided before we would, yeah, absolutely. All this. Okay. Um, the last I mean, only thing is, I see the positions. It's not like I, it's not that I don't think they're needed, but it becomes so. How does it help you? Up? If you if you're the administration, how does this help you? And is this what you need, or all you need to help you? I guess the concern became when I saw Diane, the different things that she does and finance, basically. It's like, so do we need another person to finance? Well, the, or do we need another person to have Diane? The clerking thing would relieve a lot of pressure on Diane, and that's kind of the intention, quite honestly. Okay. I mean, yeah, I mean, no, it's, <laughs> that's the truth of it. Okay. We really want this to be our finance team, but okay. Diane is spread across so many other things. Mm -hmm. that, I see her name on a lot. Yeah, and so the, if we could break that off, Nicole can become, she can use her planning degree, Diane can use her financial management expertise better, and then we can have somebody that's exactly. really focused on on that support that we that we also need. Well, yeah. so a related question to this right now is, again, everything being done so virtually, and everybody's working out of home, and I know everybody's probably working hard, but there's always more disruptions and all that, home, so you're not getting a full full capabilities out of any of your employees who are trying to work at home at the same time, particularly if they've got a child that's trying to that's virtually learning and, and there's too many interruptions. Okay. How, you know, when we get back to the office, will we, we, will, will mm -hmm. we have a, be a, be a much more productive situation may affect what you need personnel-wise? Um, I mean, I think what you're bringing up is an important thing. I have a handful of staff members who are working 12 hours for eight hours of productivity. I mean, we have a number of staff members that are recognizing their own interruptions and kind of how life is creeping in and they're, they're um, exhausting themselves. But the math, um, you know, says in order to bill, we need to put this many hours at X rates, you know, variable rates on this work, and we don't have we don't have the hours to be able to bill for all of our grants that we haven't been awarded. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
maximum productivity, we still don't have the, 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 the number of billable hours to, to generate the revenue available to us. Pat, I think Pat was going to make a comment. Pat, do you have a comment? Pat, do you have a comment? I'm sorry, I, I need to leave. I have a I meeting about this. Yeah, we all do. We all do. Okay, do we need to vote on anything, Martha? She has another meeting. No. Do we need to vote on anything? I, just, I would take 30 more seconds and just say the other thing that we've been looking at is uh, personnel policy updates. Good. So some, some things are going to come up through this committee that are going to seem mm -hmm. like why is this coming here, but it's because we've been looking at sort of the fiscal impacts of some things. Um, benefits are something that we want to take a look at. We've been talking to some of the jurisdictions who have made the leap from uh, annual sick holidays to PTO. 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 We're interested in exploring that. Mrs. Page, you mentioned before an interest or curiosity about payroll. Well. We think from a record keeping and a reconciliation it'd be better to move from um, semi monthly to bi weekly payroll. There's just a lot of things from a billing perspective that would make life a lot easier for us. That's good. Um, so there's just some things like that that are in the personnel policy that are driven by financial management, but we want we want to be able to make changes and improvements too. Um, so things are going to be coming in that regard. We're also uh, want to get ahead of a potential wave of retirements that we think might be occurring in the next couple of years. And we'd like to be able to um, consider the option of offering our retirement eligible employees the ability to stay on in a part-time capacity. So with Virginia Retirement System, you can retire and then come back after a waiting period at, at part-time. And we'd like to, candidly, yeah, we could. Keep hold of some of our people for as long as we can. And mm -hmm. I, I, Terry and I had talked about this. I said we'd like to put those procedures in place before folks start mm -hmm. talking about it so that it's there and they know what their options are before they Absolutely. make the decision. So those are the kinds of things that we're interested in bringing. Sounds so good. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, we're gonna need to adjourn because Pat has to go. I think Pat's gone, in fact. Uh, so we got to go. Uh, but anyway, uh, so good thing. I want to make sure I go well, with the numbers, how these numbers, you know, because it's like total 20. So right now we have a total of 27 people, right? Right so now saying, we have 26 people. 26 people. Where's 26? On the far oh, right. For, well, that's budget. you got budget over there. So budget versus well, entry. Yeah, so FY20 would be the for the year ending June 30th of 2020. Okay, so then so we July have 26. 1. Yeah, 26. 26, okay. That's the, and that's the number of positions okay. and the makeup that you approved when you approved the budget. Okay. So, if we okay. so that's budget. Positions, I got you. Mm -hmm. I got you. Have you. To get your I got you. I got you. Okay, good job. All right, I think we need to adjourn and thank all of you for your attention, for being here, coming all the way for Duke Kent. I was in Duke Kent Saturday, but I went down to your town okay. Saturday. But oh, anyway, all the traffic. Yeah, all the traffic. Great, yeah. great. But anyway, thank you. I was right through that. Over okay. But anyway, thank you all. Thank you, Marvin and team, for a great job. Continue to do great work.